what's up and welcome i'm the one and only west coast king and welcome back to major league 90 where we are talking major league soccer once again and today we're gonna be getting into the confidential mls player poll the results of which were released on tuesday and 140 players took part in this survey representing 21 of the 22 mls teams only nycfc declined to participate don't know why they declined to participate maybe because some of their players Wound up pretty high up on a list that you really don't want to be high up on. But you know what? That's, that's just speculation. Actually, I have no idea why they declined to participate. No clue at all. But at least one player is representing each of the other 21 MLS teams. 140 players in total. I'm not going to go over every result and every poll that was taken. But a couple of them I found to be pretty interesting. So let's get into it. So to start off with, let's get into, you know, the juicy stuff, the gossipy stuff, like the most underrated and overrated players. So to start out with the most underrated player and the winner of that poll or the player that was voted most underrated by the other 140 players was Dax McCarty. And I think this is the second year in a row that he's finished in first place in this poll. Um, and it's not really a surprise. I mean, he's very, very popular. He's a hard guy. To not like. I mean, he's just he's just a very likable dude. So this might be more of a, a little bit more of a popularity contest in the players. But you know what? Dax McCarty deserves to be on this list. Is he number one for me? Probably not. As much as I like him and he's a great guy, his leadership is unquestioned. I don't know if his skill set really makes him deserving to be an underrated player. I think ratings wise, he's probably right where he should be. I don't think he's the most talented player or a talented player that's being underrated for his talent. But he is a very likable guy, and I don't think he gets the respect that he deserves around the league, at least from the fans and things like that. A lot of people have never heard of him, and that's a crying shame because he is very decent um, as far as on the field, but he's also a great guy off of it. So it's not surprising to see that the players voted Dax McCarty the most underrated. Also on this list at number two was Diego Chara, a very similar type of a player, actually. A workhorse in the midfield, a center defensive midfielder. You know, his... his accomplishments don't always go appreciated you know they always get recognized but he's still a very very good player and it's not surprising that he's on this list as well sebastian leggett came in, or sebastian leggett i always say his name wrong i'm gonna get it right eventually sebastian leggett came in at number three uh nacho piatti number four and darlington nagby number five not sure about nagby not just because he's a timber hey i gave char the respect he's, he he deserves nagby is an underrated player though not sure that's the right list for him to be on and now the flip side of this coin, the most overrated players. And this is really what we want to get into, isn't it? Who do the other MLS players think is the most overrated player in the league? Well, technically for the second year in a row, it's Mix Discarude. Again, NYCFC, just saying. Uh, but seeing as how he's not really in the league anymore, he's getting close to a move to Sweden, I believe. He's not with New York or NYCFC He's technically still under contract with the league, but he's not with the team anymore. And like I said, he's moving somewhere else. He's not going to be playing in the MLS anymore. So we're going to skip over him. He ended up coming in with, uh, hold on, let me, let, me, let me check the stats. He came in with 16% of the vote, which is pretty high actually, because at number two with 7% is Michael Bradley. I'm not really sure I agree with this one, like at all. Michael Bradley's an overrated player. Now, he's much, he's very similar to Dax McCarty and Diego Chara. He's a player who, his, his, his contributions just don't show up on the stat sheet very much. He's a workhorse in the midfield, uh, an engine. You know, he's a vital piece of what Toronto does. And I'm not saying Toronto would be, you know, at a, a complete disarray without him. They obviously still have Giovinco and Altador. But what Michael Bradley does is he gets the ball from the defense to the offense very, very efficiently. And it makes Giovinco and Altador's jobs that much easier and they wouldn't be able to do what they do as effectively as they do it without michael bradley now i know a lot of this has to do with his six million dollar salary per season i think a lot of people think and especially the mls players some of them even said this that he's overpaid for what he does and what he contributes it's not deserving of his salary so okay a little bit a little bit salty coming from the mls players they're a little bit a little bit jealous of, of the six million dollar salary for a player again whose accomplishments don't really show up on the stat sheet but still, I think Michael Bradley's a vital part of that Toronto team that made it to the MLS Cup Final last season. So it's a little disappointing to see him on the list. At number three was Alejandro Bedoya. Don't really know if he's an overrated player. I don't think he's really underrated or overrated. He's just kind of there. I think he's kind of exactly where he needs to be as far as ratings go. Um, number four was Al uh, Andrea Pirlo. 
This is the one I feel is the most overrated. And again, I love Pirlo. I loved him when he played in Italy for Milan and Juventus. But at this point in his career, he's just not Andrea Pirlo. I don't think he's even really worthy of a designated player spot. Last year, I would have said the most overrated was not Mixed Discrude, even though he would have been high up on the list. I would have said it was Steven Gerrard. For what he's getting paid and the hype coming in around him, just didn't do anything for LA Galaxy last season. So I think we're going to start seeing these past their prime, high-profile designated players start to get more and more of these votes and start to trend towards the most overrated players in the league if they don't, if they're not able to translate that hype into results on the field. And I really don't think Pirlo is doing that. The next category is the player that crosses the line in terms of discipline more than any other. And that is the exact quote of what this category is. Now, that can be translated a couple of different ways. It could be like, Who's the dirtiest player in the game? Now, many of the players that responded and are quoted in the article said that they didn't pick the player that they did because they're dirty. They say the exact opposite. It's not that they're a dirty player. It's mostly because they're just a little bit more physical than others. Maybe they get away with the referees more than other players do. They're a little bit, you know, they, they tackle a little bit more. They get more yellow cards, whatever. But it's not that they're a dirty player. So with that in mind... Not really all that surprising that Ozzy Alonso from Seattle came away. The overwhelming favorite in this category, 25% of the 140 players picked Osvaldo Alonso from Seattle. Agreed? Um, <laughs> if you look at it like that, it's really, really not surprising. Ozzy Alonso, like I said, not a dirty player. I watch him every single week play not dirty he does not try to hurt people but he only knows how to play one way and that is full tilt 100 percent all systems go for every second that he's on the field and if you know exactly what you're going to get out of him every single game and for that reason for what he does and how he plays i absolutely love him it's one of the reasons he's one of my favorite players again not a dirty player cannot emphasize that enough i will defend him until i'm blue in the face he's not a dirty player but yes He's quite a bit more physical than maybe a lot of other players in the league are. Also making this list, number two was Felipe Martins from New York Red Bulls. Jermaine Jones also made this list at number three. This was an interesting one. I just want to read you one quote from a player that picked Jermaine Jones for this category. He said, Jermaine Jones, he thinks he's bigger than what he is. I know that sometimes you get frustrated, but you can't get into personal stuff like I have more. I have money and you don't. He actually said that to someone? Jermaine Jones actually said the words, I have money and you don't. That's insane. He actually also made the most under or most overrated player list as well. Only 2% of the vote, but that's still something. It's enough to actually make the list. Huh. I'm thinking a lot of players in the MLS really, really don't like Jermaine Jones. And I can kind of see why now. The next category I wanted to talk about was... According to the players, again, this is the, the player survey, which big name designated player would you like to see come to the MLS? They could pick any player in the world they would like to see play in the league. And at number one, and it was pretty close, 22% of the vote went to Zlatan Ibrahimovic. And I 100% agree. If I had to pick one player in the world, regardless of talent or whatever, I'm picking Zlatan because of his... His character and his his high profile personality and just what he is. He is a showman, maybe more than any other player in the league. He does things to prove that he is the best. And I absolutely love that about the guy. A lot of times that just pisses me off about players who aren't good enough to really be doing that. Namely, someone like Bentner. Never was good enough to do that, but he constantly tried. Zlatan is one of the best players in the world still despite being like what 35 36 years old It's like he could play till he's 50. So I mean, I'm not really too worried about the talent uh, portion of this or the aspect of this He's gonna be great no matter where he plays or how old he is He's just being a phenomenal player to bring into the league and I'd love to see him join the league as well So not surprised that he got the players vote for the for the player They'd like to see come to the league number two with 20% was Lionel Messi as much as I love Messi and respect the hell out of him as a player, not really, he doesn't have the same, you know, character as Zlatan. He's not really flamboyant or, or you know, like, look at me. He's not that type of a player. He, he speaks with his performance on the field, and I respect that about him. Not sure if that's really what the MLS needs, 
But you can't really argue with bringing in Lionel Messi, could you? Cristiano Ronaldo made it at number three with 17%. Wayne Rooney was fourth with 6%. Uh, and also Neymar had 6% as well. And then Javier Hernandez, Chicharito, came in with 4% of the vote. And that's probably the one that's most likely. Maybe Wayne Rooney. Probably not anytime soon. Probably still two or three years away for Wayne Rooney. But possibly Chicharito would be the one that's most likely to come to the MLS. And again, I'd love to see Chicharito play in the United States. Now the last category we're going to talk about is which team has the best, most vocal fans in the league the best home support now you can look at this one of two ways it could be who has the best fans or who's the craziest where is it you know the, the toughest place to go play because the fans are so great or which stadium do you really not like going to play at which is just which stadium is just a freaking nightmare to go to and you know me being a seattle fan CenturyLink field in seattle you know the biggest home attendance numbers in the league very very loud very difficult place to play for opposing players absolutely phenomenal atmosphere i thought they'd be number one they were not with nearly half of the vote 49 percent it's portland yep so that happened portland apparently has the best home fans according to the players in the league you know what okay R respect Oh, that hurt to say. Res respect to Portland fans. They are, they're very, very good. There's a very strong traveling contingency that follows them to CenturyLink Field when the two teams play. Obviously, big, big derby there. Big rivalry between the two supporter groups as well. So, for Portland to come in at number one here, mm, it's a tough pill to swallow. Not sure I agree with that, but you know what? That's the that's the player's vote. You can you can vote whatever you want to. So, yep, Portland at 49% of the vote. They they get the number 1 spot. Seattle was number 2 with 28% and number 3 was Kansas City and rightfully so. They are very very loud, very very vocal in that stadium as well. Mad respect to them as well. So, you know what? It's nice to be... And they had 14%. No one else even got close to that. So those are clearly the top three supporter groups in the MLS. As far as the players are concerned. Also, the only other two teams that made the list with more than 1% of the vote was Orlando in number four with 4%. Again, you saw their home crowd. If you saw that match, their opener in Orlando in their new stadium. I'm sure they'll be moving up that list very, very quickly once some of the players get a chance to play there. And at number five was Toronto. So... Yeah, I mean, Portland and Seattle, one and two, that does not surprise me in the least. So those are all of the topics that I wanted to highlight here today. Some of the other results from the polls, from some of the other questions, the thoughts of the players, you know, what they had to say on each one was pretty interesting as well. So if you want to check out the full results, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Go check it out. It's pretty interesting to see what these players have to say confidentially, you know, what they have to say, what their true feelings are on some of these topics, especially refereeing. I thought that one was pretty funny as well. So if you want to see that, again, link in the description below. But that is going to be it for this one. If you did enjoy it, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you when we come back for some more Major League 90. See ya.